All right, back episode twenty-two. Chris is back on deck. Mm. A couple of solo episodes, um, but he's back. We'll talk about where he's been, what he's been doing, why his life's been a bit of pain, a bit of a pain in the ass recently, which I've had as well. But uh, here's what it is. Mm. Um, yeah, you've had a bit of a, a bit of a health kind of a scare, I suppose, small scare after a. Um, after a colonoscopy or a, uh, what do we call that? Like a standard procedure or a like health check or what do we put them down to? Yeah, well, I mean, but, I mean, I think, and everybody, I think everybody knows this now, but not everyone adheres to it. Um, as we get older and stuff starts happening to us, if you feel something, uh, some discomfort or pain or something, and it doesn't feel right, the worst thing you could possibly do is ignore it. You, you, you need to deal with it. I mean, I felt a pain that was a little bit uncomfortable. I wasn't sure what it was. So I went and had um, some health checks um, and uh, and had the, uh, a colonoscopy to see if there's anything going on in there. Um, that appeared to be okay, but then I still had some scans, um, CT scans to make just to be doubly sure. And as it turns out, um, and this is, and everybody's slightly different, my my uh, bowel and large intestine is just a little bit more twisty than other people. And sometimes if things don't go through nice and smoothly, I can get a bit of inflammation and that can cause discomfort. Um, and that's what it was, which is good to know because I've had friends who have had discomfort the same as me, not worried about it, and now they're not here anymore. Yeah, 100%. Um, and it's interesting that I was chatting to some friends in the US after we spoke about this and the standard procedure, as I think I mentioned to you, that like as a routine health check in Australia, they still don't really recommend it. They don't even put an age barrier on it. In the US, virtually everyone over 50, go and get a colonoscopy. Yeah. So all my friends that are over 50 in the US, they've all had them done. Yeah, yeah. It's smart. I think it's the smart thing to do because the, the, the prognosis for if you're over 50 years of age and they find something um, early, the prognosis is really good uh, in up, up over 90%. So yeah. it's so worth doing it. And interestingly, the gastroenterologist who did me <clears throat> said, just not possible to get to over 50. He said in 95% of cases, we find something. Yeah. And most of the time it's nothing. But the fact that you'll find nothing is actually the exception and not the rule. Yeah. So, um, so um, the bottom line is, is that everything in your body is potentially cancerous. That's just a yeah. fact. So it's good to stay on top of these things. Um, I know, and it's particularly been something that's been quarantined mainly in men's health, that men have been very reluctant to go to the doctor or to get things checked out. And there could be a myriad of reasons for that. But one of the most common ones I hear is, well, you know what? I just don't want to know. I just don't yeah. want to, you know, and they're too frightened to go because they don't want to hear bad news. Um, but unfortunately, you know, they, they don't want to hear that bad news and then later they just get worse news. So it's a strange concept, isn't it, when you think about it? It's very strange. If I get it early, I can potentially do something about it, but I don't want to hear about it. So I'll just wait. And then if I get it late, <laughs> I'm screwed. Yeah. It's like, the, it's like if you're on the Titanic and the guy walked up to you and said, mate, the boat's sinking, albeit very slowly, but it is sinking. And the yeah. other guy goes, mate, don't say that to me. Don't you tell me this boat's sinking. Don't yeah. say it. I do not want to hear those words come out yeah. of my mouth again. The boat is sinking. So the band plays on and everyone, yeah. <laughs> that's what they do. And sure enough, a couple of hours later, what happened? They're all yeah. dead. Same principle. Yeah, don't tell me that I'm going back to the buffet. Yeah. Don't <laughs> tell me not to eat five cheesecakes today. I want to hear you say that. Do not say it because... It's not the information I want, and it's not helping me. Yeah, it's so crazy. But I'm just, I was interested, even when I went to my doctor and my motivation, and I had one done yesterday, we can talk about the process in a bit more in a moment and what the outcome was. I don't have a full um, uh, upload from the doctor yet because he was so busy, I just left. That's, even my doctor, my general GP said, oh, look, you know, you've done all the health scans, and I don't know if the US have the... Um, the screening that we actually do here, the free screening tests. I don't know if they send those out and I wouldn't imagine they do. 
Mm. So because people in Australia, we have that free ski, uh, free screening, um, the home test kit, that they're somewhat reluctant just to send you in to get these things done if you don't have any, you know, potential discomfort. You're saying you had some discomfort, so you want to see what was happening. Um, I just requested it because of I told you the story that, you know, a friend of a friend that I was swimming with him one day and we had dinner with him on a Saturday night, went for a swim at Manly Beach on Sunday morning. The last time I was back in Australia three years ago, with eight months, he was gone. Um, 53, super yep. fit, yep. you know, worth about 10 million bucks, developer over in, in New Zealand and gone. Yep. Now, I have found out that he did have some bleeding um, and he didn't actually do anything about it. He just kind of took it maybe as a a polyp or a um, hemorrhoid or something he had some some bleeding for his back passage and just went on about life and the next minute you know took that much of his bowel out he had to go to a, a bag straight away and then within four or five months he was virtually being told he had a few months to go and he lasted eight so he was gone yeah so you know i said to my doctor that i you know i've just had too many people around me with these types of things and i understand that if you get these things early i'm at that age now let's just get it done and you know the the, the doctor asked me all the um the surgeon asked me straight away that, you know, you've been doing the screening, but they're negative, they're just blah, 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 so let's test anyway. So, yeah, and in the end, just to my report came back, as I said, I haven't spoken to the surgeon yet. This was only yesterday. I had a small polyp that was um, cold snared, so they've obviously frozen that polyp, and I have diverticulosis. Diverticulitis. Div <laughs> Sorry, diverticulitis, that'll do. Yeah. Do you yeah. know what it is? Well, it's inflammation of the bowel, I understand, or all the colon. It, it's not life-threatening. Um, no. It's, it's quite common, and it's exactly um, what I had, and it's exactly the same thing, is that it's sometimes, and depending on what sort of foods you eat, if something, as I said, doesn't pass through smoothly and might sit around, things like nuts or corn kernels, even even tomato seeds, can just cause some inflammation mm. um, in the bowel, and, and that doesn't necessarily mean anything. It can be quite uncomfortable, but... It's um, but the gastroenterologist said to me, said Chris, all you got to do is just go and drink heaps of water and flood your system, and you and you'll probably be fine. Yes. So, um, but um, in very very rare cases, he said to me with diverticulitis, they may need to operate, but normally um, never happens. And if no. inflammation or an infection occurs, that they just treat it with a course of antibiotics. Yes, exactly. I read a little bit online. I was reluctant to actually look it up because I want to speak to the um, doctor first because, as I said, he's literally just put it on the form, but I haven't actually spoken to him. Oh, there's my scans obviously going on. Oh, yeah, um, all those photos, yeah. But, and I read a bit about today. I actually found a proper Health Australian site with all the, the symptoms, the diagnosis, blah, 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 and there's virtually nothing to it. You know, I've got a friend that, in Melbourne that does suffer quite badly with it, and she obviously gets severe inflammation, and she does go on like a detox to actually calm her system down. Um, she even gets a bit of a, a body reaction to it. She knows when it's 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 inflamed. Um, the just, only thing I would you, oh you do yeah I, I get it once or twice a year. Yep, and it's probably around my diet, and I know when <clears> it's <throat> happening, and it lasts about for me about ten or fifteen minutes. Yeah, on, but it, because it was such an unusual um, pain, and I'd never felt it before, it rang a few alarm bells, so I didn't know what it was. That's why I wanted to check it out. Um, yeah. Now I know um, it's fine. I'm quite, I'm quite comfortable because I know what to do. Interesting that you say about nuts. What be, what's interesting for me is I would say, like once upon a time, I could eat anything at any time of the day, and nothing would happen. And I don't know if you're around, but back in the day when we we're at the track, I would literally walk across the track at three forty-five or four o'clock with a coffee in my hand and a slice of banana bread before training, and run and have no problems. Now, if I did that, my guts would be out here. I'd be so bloated. And if I have nuts or bread after four or five o'clock, I get really bloated. That kind of makes sense now that my body's having some sort of reaction. If I eat it during the day, for whatever reason, I just don't have the impact of it. But yep. there is some foods that will make me feel, um, and not even gassy, it's more just a bloating because then it will just pass. But you're right about the water. But yeah, so mine was obviously fine and, and pretty straightforward, but... We were chatting and laughing about the, the process that you've got to go through, um, apart from just being stuck in the toilet for virtually 24 hours. But in terms of drinking that, the, um, uh, what have we called, the, the, the compound, I didn't actually have a problem with it. I thought it actually wasn't too bad, to be honest. It tastes like hydrolyte to me. It didn't to me. I was, I was <laughs> nauseous the whole time. I had to have a whole 
big glitter. I had my soda stream beside me with elderflower um, cordial mm -hmm. just to flavor the soda stream. And it was one for one. <clears throat> I had to go one for one to stop throwing up. Um, and it took about, for me, how long did it take to start to react? It was good. It was over an hour. Oh, yeah, mine was a few hours. Yeah, before I was getting any kind of reaction. And 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 it's not a great reaction because it's like if you've eaten something bad. Yes. Tummy cramps and sweating and all of a sudden things. Start, and you know everything in your body is starting to liquefy. I didn't have any of that. Any, I, I got a little bit, yeah. maybe a little bit of nauseous. Having the first packet in the morning or whatever time it was, just a 250 mil. I don't know if your process was the same. Then yeah. I had to have a litre, 70 grams of a bigger packet. Um the Pico Prep, or what it was called, no, and then I once I, yeah, once I finished that litre, um, then after an hour after that, my system started to shift, and then I was away. But yeah, so did yours come in a in a box like a kit? Yeah, but I my two packets had five hundred grams of powder each. Oh, see, it's different. And it was vile taste. They even warned me about it when I picked it up. They said, "Listen, this is going to be awful." They told That's me. That's and did you have to make big jugs up and leave them in the fridge? No, 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 no. I just, you mix one packet up on the day one and just drink a lot. Over and how much was it? What, what was it? How much liquid? Um, uh, five, half a litre. Yeah, different process. Interesting because it must be, my sister said to me that a few of her friends have complained about it as well, how bad it tastes. Oh. And mine, Chris, my first glass was 250 mil. Right. 250 mil, one glass. Second glass, 250 mil. Then one litre of a different product, then waited 12 hours, then 250 mil, done. Wow. It took me 40 minutes to get 500 mils down. On my litre, I was allowed to drink the litre over an hour and a half, 90 minutes to All drink right. the litre. I had to do it. They told me I had to do it in then 30 minutes. No, see, it must be a different process. And mine was, in honestly, mate, all honesty, it was dry, like drinking um, orange Gatorade. My, mine... It was so nauseating. It, it, it caused instant nausea. And I well, took another big drink. I was going one for one, and I was just staring at it going, oh, fuck, this is arduous. It was, <laughs> ah, it was a real struggle. And then the next day was the same. It was really, really hard going. Um, what time did you – so you obviously fasted as well, and you stopped yeah. eating at a certain time. Um, so I think I was – I went in at – 10 30 yesterday morning and monday at midday i had to stop eating no mine was way before i just stopped eating the day before yeah so did i oh but it was only it was midday the day before oh mine wasn't mine was at uh, i think seven o'clock at night nothing after seven ah okay no i stopped at midday then so yeah slightly different process but it's interesting i tell you what i even thought it's probably not a bad thing to do to take that liquid the one that I took, not the one you took by the sounds, yeah. maybe even once every 12 months, you'd have a complete clean out. Like it's interesting that you get to virtually nearly clear liquid coming out of your... It was clear for me. Yeah. I, I For probably two or three hours, I was just water coming through. Yes, same, same, same. Um, pretty amazing that you could actually just get water through your bowel and through your intestine, right? Yeah, absolutely nothing, which is probably quite healthy, I'd imagine. Yeah. Um, because... Um, you know, over time, as they say, you know, things build up in there and can cause in all sorts of trouble for you. Yeah. You, um, in From that perspective, just doing that process alone was probably a, a positive thing for your health. Yeah, and that's what I thought. Like your body just gets the 24 hours of actually not processing food or two days of not processing food, mm. right? Just mm. gets to have a complete clean out. So when these people talk about going on these cleanse diets, I think, you know, rather than actually doing a week of detox, I'd rather do that 24 hours of that product and just have a complete empty out. Yeah. And one of the other things I learned, and this is a big problem for me, it may be for other people as well, um, but I, something I have to work on is that I, um, I eat very quickly. Like, mm. I can eat a hamburger in three bites. I don't fuck around, I don't chew food, I bite it, I swallow it like a crocodile, I just don't chew it. Um, and that's a problem because yeah. digestive process, you've got to chew your food properly and, then, and that's why... Often I see food coming out the other end. It doesn't look much different to when it went in. Um, 
Yeah, two things there. One, because you haven't chewed it, but secondly, because it may not have been real food. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> Like, uh, if it's a McDonald's hamburger or KFC, you know, it's just okay. coming out the same way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I often see things and I go, oh, I remember that meal, um, <laughs> because it still looks like it. So that's yeah. a problem. And that would that would solve a lot of my problems well if I took my a little bit more time and chewed my food, which I... And here's the thing. It's such a Western thing. Um and it's interesting that you say that. Just literally the other day, Radi was over here and I had to, and obviously um, she's French, and we were leaving to go somewhere and I cooked some toast before we went and I'm walking out the door and I do this quite frequently in the mornings. I cook my toast, vision my toast, I get a piece of paper towel, I wrap my toast up in the paper towel and I just eat as I'm walking to my car and then I put one on my console and I drive. She literally freaked out at me that I was going to eat and walk with my piece of toast. She said to me, if my mother saw you do that, she'd be absolutely horrified because Europeans, it's all about when you eat, it's time to eat. You do nothing else, but you sit and eat your food. Yeah. And there's something nice about it, right? Well, there Why is. do we have to be rushing all the time? You know, just, and she said to me, I'm not walking out the door, just sit and eat your food. And I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, but I'm like that with Sam. I have to slow down so much. If I just ate the way I normally eat, Sam's two bites into her meal, I'm done. Yeah. I'm just looking at it. I'm just watching her eat. Yeah, I've definitely slowed down going out for dinner a lot yeah. um, and just to enjoy the meal. You know, I am that person, take one or two bites, put your knife and fork back on your plate now and just sit. But when I'm same, when I'm on my own, I still do things quite quickly. But um, yeah, mate, it's probably part of the problem of, you know, it's why these Europeans and they say this European diet is also the best, but it's also maybe all these small things why some of these European countries just say so healthy so long because we just are rushed with everything we do now, you know? Yeah, it's crazy. And and there's, there's one other really important thing that got highlighted to me about this whole process as well. And, and I've been talking to people about this um, in Queensland and said this is probably, and this costs the lives of two people I know recently. This is the smartest, best advice I could give anyone about their own personal health. If you're not satisfied with what the doctor has told you, or you feel there's still something wrong and it hasn't been addressed, don't give up. Keep making inquiries. Um, the, uh, the, the, reason, and the reason I say this is I had a friend recently had bowel cancer in the family, she's my age, um, was getting colonoscopies every six months. But they didn't find anything. Yeah. Now, never asked for a CT scan. The cancer was sitting outside the bowel and it killed her. The gastroenterologist for me, when I went and saw him, I said, mate, um, you didn't find anything or you just found these two polyps, cleaned them up and you're all, and all happy. I said, mate, what about on the outside of CT scan? He said, yeah, yeah, if you really want to be sure, you should do it. And my thought immediately was, why aren't you telling me that? Yeah. Why am I telling you that? And the only reason I knew it is because I lost someone that I knew. And yeah. you now my attitude is everything about something that I'm, I'm concerned about, I go and do all my own research and then I tell them I want these things done. We're so lazy with our body for some reason, Chris. I started to write this article the other day about um, a similar thing. You know, why do we just reluctantly want to put energy or effort into our health? It's just crazy. If you had a car, not everyone, definitely I would. Um, I understand some people are just really reluctant to maintain the car as well. But if you had a car and it was making a horrible noise out of the engine and you took it to a mechanic and he said, oh, it's all done there and you drive off and it's still making that horrible noise, you either go back and say to the guy, it's still making the same noise, or you go well, to somebody else and say, yeah. I've got this terrible noise coming out of the engine. It's leaking fluid like you wouldn't believe. Can you please have a look at it? But when you it comes why? to our health, it's like we just... Do you know why we do it? Like that? It's very simple. No. I think I've mentioned it before. The car costs money. Yeah. <laughs> I want to look after it because we don't want to spend any more on it. We want to make sure it's all up and running and, and doing what it's supposed to do. Your health costs nothing. And we don't want to spend any money at all on that. We just don't want to do yeah. it because it could get expensive. So we just don't do it. Like someone says, um, if you've got a pain in your lower abdomen and they say we well, should get a colonoscopy and that's going to cost you 600 bucks, people go, oh, fine, I'm not spending 600. Yeah. 
then try and say, and then the someone says, well, if you spend the 600, you'll probably save your life. If you don't, you'll die. They can't find the 600 bucks quick enough. <laughs> that's what they should be saying. Listen, it's oh. 600 bucks, but it's probably going to save your life. I had this conversation with my sister, and I think I was telling you about it as well, where she's got this hip issue at the moment. And I said, go and have an MRI. And she's like, oh, I don't want to spend the $600. And I'm like, would you prefer to be walking around every single day we speak, you're in this immense pain, the physio can't find what's wrong, and I'm not blaming the physio because in this situation, he can't see what's wrong because he needs more data. Yeah. And you have access, we have access to the best medical facilities in the world in this country. We We've got MRI machines virtually anywhere now, oh. You know, at least within 20 minutes of your house. And even if it does cost you 600, you won't spend $600 to get yourself out of the pain and you haven't left the house for three weeks because you can't walk. Why would you want to live like that? You know, yet we'll go and spend, she goes to football every week. She'll go to the finals to watch some guys running around the football field that cost you $250 a ticket. <laughs> and if you understand, and the weird thing is, and we're so fortunate in this country, if you understand our health system, if you take the time to understand it, there's so much of our procedures you can get bulk built. Yes. My CT scan, right, which the doc would put me straight in, I'm literally in there in 24 hours. Free. Yeah. Bulk bill. Most of my procedure up in a private hospital, by the way, private hospital, meal, this, bed, recovery, they looked after me like I was a, um, you know, uh, aristocracy. I got a big chunk of that bulk bill and just paid a little bit in the, in the middle. Yeah. So I didn't have, so, and the anesthesiologist, which it cost a fortune, bulk bill. Yeah. I don't know. I went to private, and I've got health insurance, so I went through a private, um, my private health insurance. So, yeah, it's um, I don't know, mate. It's uh, I, I think you're so right about the whole thing being for free that we just don't value it because you know it's just given yeah. to us. Correct. If we start charging people, you know, I still go back to this theory. If we started charging people on a monthly basis or an annual basis, and you had to have these tests, let's say the government turned around and said, okay, you get your colonoscopy for free, you get this for free, you get that for free. And if you're not looking after your health, at the end of the year, we take it all back and we charge you a sum for it. You know, you'll get a $10,000 bill. If you've done a really good job looking after yourself, we pay for all that and we'll give you some money, you know, for doing such a good job. But yeah, I don't know. It's crazy. And it's just as we've spoken about time and time again, it's only when you get those really big health scares or you start getting to the end of your life and people start scrambling, you know, yeah. trying to find all these things, you know. And, and the biggest other cause of that is the failure to acknowledge that your life is finite. No one 100%. Talks about it. No one, no one's, no, no, they just don't want to talk about it. And they think everyone, or, and I always say this, everyone knows that they're not going to live forever, but everyone behaves as if they are. Yeah, they do, 100%. That's the problem. Every single person, if you ask them today, every 20-year-old, and said, how long do you think you'll live? Most of them will say 80 or 90. Yeah. And it ain't going to happen for a lot of people. This no, is not... for a lot of people. Yeah, but that, but everyone thinks that way, and they behave accordingly. Yeah. And, and then um, and, and then get sort of shocked when, you know, I'm always shocked when someone says, oh, do you hear old um, um, great-grandma Ethel die? And people go, oh, my God, you're kidding. And so she was 101. <laughs> what, what exactly what did you think was going to happen <laughs> like what, what, what was the next step for her yeah you know what i mean like i'm always shocked when people get shocked when people die when everybody does it yeah and or the reverse you know when someone says oh you know uncle charlie just uncle charlie died the other week he was only 62 yeah but he smoked 50 cigarettes a day and drank a liter of scotch yeah and he weighed a, <laughs> and he weighed a quarter of a metric ton yeah, exactly. Yeah, what a shock. He died. <laughs> like when Amy Winehouse died, everyone was like, oh, can you believe it? Amy Winehouse is dead. And I went, no. Like, yeah, rally 25. <laughs> but she went that far. Yeah, what exactly. Is, what is wrong with people? Like how yeah. do they always get so shocked at things that look really obvious? It's like the sun comes up and you go, oh, my God, there it is again. Yeah. I can't believe it. Where did the it whole the health thing is such a challenge though. I've been thinking about this so much about, you know, just the abuse that we, and I'm not saying we've, we've abused our bodies in different ways, I suppose, but the sheer abuse that some people do, but then there's going to come that time where they just, you know, now they just start to panic and want to fix it. Um, 
and it's in, for most people it's too late you know i've made a conscious decision that once i turned 50 that i just wanted to more as opposed to being i still want to be fit but that my fitness wasn't as important as my health um and i realized some things that we were doing particularly you know running track and doing lots of crazy stuff for a long time that your health starts to suffer your overall health if we call your health your wellness the ability to actually do you know just general things every day I have hip pain all the time now, obviously, from running for a very long time. But now it's just become, okay, I just want to be healthy. I want my wellness to be my priority. I want to be able to still do things into my latter years. And if that means skiing and going for bushwalks and, you know, stuff like that, um, and if that means I can't run or lift as heavy weights as I used to, yeah, that's okay. I've got to sacrifice some of those things. But, um, yeah, it's crazy, mate. I don't know. But, uh, oh, well, we've both come out the other side of that. Um, bit of a bit of an experience. But, uh, yeah, I thought it was pretty pretty straightforward. I'm glad I did it in the end. They booked me in so quickly because I just went and saw my doc and then the hospital rang me the next day and say, oh, we've got a, we've got um, you know, a spot for you next week. Do you want to come in? I'm like, next week? Oh, yeah, okay. Let's just get it done. So I was planning to go after Christmas, but I thought we'll just get it done now. Yeah, I know, I know there are some bad stories and people have some bad health outcomes and also not some great experiences with our health system. But by and large, on a world standard, we have got one of the best health systems in the world. I've, I have to say, I've been in hospital a lot for various things over my life, mainly through injuries, but I've, I've been well looked after my whole life. Um, yeah, and I read the other day where the current cost per person or the, the average spend per person in Australia is about $5,000 per year per person. In the US, the average spend per person is about 12000 Yeah, Their average life expectancy in the last 20 years has dropped by four years. It's still dropping. Yeah, it will. Yeah. Yeah, so they're, they're spending more money than they've ever spent per person, yet their life expectancy is now starting to uh, go down quite rapidly, which is, you know, given today's modern medicine, that's pretty pretty wild. And per capita uh, and even per individual, like they have the highest health cost per person, yeah, than anyone in the world. Yeah, yeah they do. It's really, really expensive. Um, and, and health in America is no different to health here in Australia. I mean, the same things that afflict Americans afflict us. So. Yeah. It's just that the way their system operates, it's um, really healthcare is, um, unless you can negotiate it in your package at work, it's for wealthy people. Yeah, 100%. You're not, if and you're, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you've got the money in the US, it's amazing. Oh, for sure. Oh, yeah. America has some of the most, the finest hospitals and doctors and surgeons and specialists in the world. But if you haven't got money or a package through your work, you're screwed. Yeah, yeah. And that's a real problem and has been in America for a very long time. Yeah, I don't know how they're going to solve that. but um, Well, anyways. Dickhead Trump, by the way, you know that peanut head, <laughs> he's already, after his last term, said, I will solve health care in one day. Never happened. He's now banging on again saying, everyone, I know I didn't, oh, he didn't say that. He, said, he says, I'm going to repeal Obamacare when I get back in 2024, like he was supposed to do it last time, didn't. Now he reckons he's going to do it again. It'll, it'll just strand millions of Americans without health care. He doesn't. Yeah, yeah. And weirdly, people who need health care the most, which is the poorest, dumbest people in America, they're all the ones that vote for it. Yeah. <laughs> and he's going to take health care away from them. Most of them are on Medicaid and uh, Medicare. Um, and through the Affordable Care um, Act, which is which is Obamacare, they're going to lose it. Yeah. They don't know it. And they'll vote for him because they, he, they, he, they think he's going to serve to them some miracle health thing that they can all afford, he yeah. won't. <laughs> he will not do it, and um, yet, but they'll still vote for him. And even when they lose their health care, this is how stupid they are, they'll still say it wasn't his fault. No, exactly. Because he'll, he'll tell them it wasn't his fault. Yeah. He'll blame, like he does, <laughs> plays the blame game. He'll tell them it was all the Democrats' fault, um, and that's why you don't have your Medicaid and your Medicare anymore, and and you're, you're screwed. And, yeah. and it's just... Uh, but that's what's actually happening right now. That's a, that's another rabbit hole. That's um, and that one's not going to be solved by you and I. But um, I've got to go. But uh, it was good to have a quick chat about our our previous experience. We might even chat about when you went through your your little bit of a heart scare there for a while, a few years back um, as well. Yeah. So, all right. Good to chat. That's a wrap. Um, and until next time, see you soon. See you, mate.